The state's remaining power stations are to be sold as soon as buyers can be found, executing one of the more memorable political backflips and establishing a new power block through the upper house. On Tuesday, Premier Barry O'Farrell stitched up a deal with the two Shooters and Fishers Party MLCs, Robert Brown and Robert Borsak. In return for their support of the sale of electricity generators, the government amended the Game and Feral Animal Control Act to allow licensed shooters into 79 national parks, nature reserves and conservation areas to cull invasive pests, pigs, dogs, cats, rabbits and goats. It was a stunning end to more than 20 years of political dispute in this state over the privatisation of electricity. Shortly, the Premier, first we round up the critics and the dealmakers, they say, have sold out the public on privatisation. Well, I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't use the word we sold them out, I think we've sold them in. Uh, the economic conditions that we're facing in New South Wales at the moment, the situation in relation to jobs, uh, the lack of growth in the economy, all those sorts of things have to be taken into account. We looked at the issue pretty carefully. We're not. <clears throat> we didn't just say here's an opportunity for us to get what we want. You sure? That's uh, no, sure. I, I, it sure I, looks like. Yes, I assure you of that, and I assure your listeners of that. We don't. We don't deal that way. You have a look at our our history in this uh, in this parliament. You'll see that we've always been honest brokers. On Tuesday, to their apparent surprise, Shooters and Fishers MLC's Robert Borsak and Robert Brown were called to the Premier's office to be told they had a deal. Licensed shooter access to designated national parks in return for their support for the sale of the remaining electricity generators. We took the opportunity with the unions um, to say, well, look, we'll try and get the best deal we can now. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to verbal the unions there. The unions did not want the sale of the power. But I have to say we work very closely with the Unions New South Wales, with the United Services Union and with the ETU, and a couple of the others whose members are directly affected by these, uh, by these uh, privatisations, and we, dis we decided uh, that we would uh, prosecute this and we would get the very best deal we could for them. We've done that and we stand by. There was no secret deal, Madam Speaker. There is no secret deal, Madam Speaker. So, after the financially disastrous Gen Trader contracts delivered by the outgoing Keneally government in 2010, the remaining generators are to be sold outright. Gross proceeds are being talked down to just $3 billion. Tamblin, in the report that he did for the O'Farrell government, said these assets are worth 6 to $8 billion. If you're going to sell them, now is not the time to sell these assets. And this is not me saying it. Uh, yesterday in the Financial Review, JP Morgan was saying, now is not the time to sell. In 2008, this man, John Robertson, then leader of Unions New South Wales, effectively split Labor when he refused to negotiate privatisation, then being pushed against binding party policy by Premier Morris Yemmer and a caucus majority. Because as much as the media... And some of the MPs want to say this is simply the union movement holding the government to ransom. Let's be very clear about this. 85% of the people in New South Wales are opposed to privatisation. This House does not support Morris Yemmer and Michael Costa's plans to sell off the state's electricity assets. Also putting the boot in at the time was then opposition leader Barry O'Farrell. Resisting shock jock and internal Liberal Party pressure, he refused to help Yemmer get it through Parliament destroying Yemmer's premiership. They didn't want to do it my way, they can get on without me. I don't resolve from my position, Quentin. I've held that position since 97. I still hold that position. Electricity is an essential service. After one of the biggest routs in the electoral history of Australia at the 2011 state election, John Robertson is now the opposition leader. He might be consistent, but he's powerless, with just 20 Bear Pit MPs. Also powerless screens MLC Kate Fairman. She fears more deals are on the way through a new coalition of mutual convenience. Shooters and fishers, Liberals and Nationals, plus the Christian Democrats. They said in the House the other day that this was the first tranche of uh, more things to come. We don't know what they are. So if uh, selling off national parks in terms of allowing hunters into national parks, backflipping on a major promise to the people of New South Wales about that is just the first tranche, then heaven help us what's going to you know, be coming down the track. 
privatising electricity assets is unpopular. The government's done an even more unpopular deal, I would say, by allowing hunting in national parks. So it wasn't a win-win for the government. It was a lose-lose situation. And, and I think the community's really angry about this. As well, there are concerns that with IPART, the independent pricing regulator removed from regulating a privatised power industry, consumers will be vulnerable to industry-wide price increases. What isn't in this bill is any improved consumer protections. Something Barry O'Farrell said in 2008 when he opposed Maurice Yemmer's proposal, he said you need to make sure there's proper consumer protections in there for pensioners and families that are struggling. This legislation contains none of that. Why do you assume there's any competition now when the government owns it? And why do you assume the government runs it any better than a private enterprise could run it? Well, the... The, 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 the generators in the last government, certainly in the last 10 years, were abysmally run. The decision to allow Game Council licensed shooters to cull invasive species in national parks and crown reserves has stunned the conservationists. Evidence has repeatedly shown that ground shooting by amateur hunters is not an effective method for controlling feral animals. It also poses a significant risk to public safety. The deal between the government and the shooters and fishers extends to nearly 80 of our national parks and reserves, including popular tourist destinations like Kosciuszko, Barrington Tops and the Mount Codomalus uh, State Conservation Area near Orange. We've had six years now of this, this exact same paradigm operating in New South Wales in state forests. We've had 50 years of that same paradigm operating in, uh, in Victoria and in other states in New South Wales and in, uh, indeed in New Zealand. Uh, the Greens will continue to say that as long as the sun shines. Um, the evidence goes the other way, Quentin. The evidence goes the other way. Today, the Public Service Association representing National Park Rangers imposed a ban on any activity establishing recreational hunting in parks, largely on occupational and public safety grounds. The union complains its members were not consulted before the government's announcement. The remnants of a camping trip which turned tragically wrong. The safety concerns were exacerbated through a recent New Zealand incident in which a young woman was accidentally shot and killed by a spotlighting hunter firing from the back of a ute at night. The woman was brushing her teeth in this camping ground. The remorseful hunter pleaded guilty to unlawful killing. He said he'd mistaken the reflection from the woman's headlamp for the eyes of a deer. Gentlemen, you will lose the politics of this of uh, shooters in national parks and crown reserves the moment a citizen is killed or injured, won't you? Well, well, we can only go on the track record of what we've seen happening in 400 state forests in the last six years, and that is no, no such thing has happened. No adverse and incident? There's been no adverse incidents that relate in any way, shape or form to members of the public. And on any one day, Quentin, yeah. you have a look at the population that is running around state forests, including uh, four-wheel drivers, rally ra rally operators, uh, foresters, gators, foresters, foresters contractors, the list goes on and on and on. Our, our national parks, the vast majority of them, have no visitors. Despite the government's claim that we have 38 million visitors through our national parks, they must have had someone sitting down at, at Lane Cove National Park on a Saturday watching the football being kicked around and extrapolated that figure.